Welcome, everybody, this week to the Damage Per Second Podcast. It's week number 65. What a thrilling week wow. it's been, folks. What were you going to say, Brett? It's a lot. It is a lot. I can't believe it's been that long. It doesn't feel like it. No, it doesn't. I live my life one quarter mile at a time, though, so... <laughs> One quarter mile at a time? What? <laughs> it's, a, it's a Fast and the Furious riff. Oh, okay. Have not seen it. Come on, Jay Barino, stay woke. <laughs> I don't know what that means either, to be honest. I have no. <laughs> I don't know what you kids are talking about with these. You say things are lit? What does that even, What does that mean? I don't know. The last thing I lit was a match. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I remember um, I was listening to a podcast and. They like NPR or something, and they were interviewing a young, a young woman and asking her about what all these different uh, terms meant. And it turned out, it turned out that they all just sort of meant the same thing. <laughs> like, well, oh, uh, okay, what's lit? Well, I don't know. It's like fun. Like if a party is like really like exciting or something. Okay, what's turnt? Well, turnt's sort of like lit, but like, um, it's like maybe even like more exciting. <laughs> It's somehow this party more just exciting. went from lit to turn. Yeah. <clears throat> All the recent terminology that's been fl- like coming up, like lit, it's pretty annoying. You damn kids! I'm oh shaking my, my fist at you. The, the dabbing. What the dabbing? Have you guys? The da- you guys see people dabbing at all? Like, so I I understand life? what it is, but I don't know why. I just don't understand why. Also, I work with a bunch of kids. Right, like they're all like 16, 18 year old kids at this pizza place, so they're all dabbing, and so now they got me dabbing, just and I just do it when I'm feeling. <laughs> I do it when I'm feeling good. I'm just like, boom. You now know? they got me I'm dabbing. This, I don't know. I'm this delivery. I'm out of here. Boom. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I can't explain it. I don't know what the purpose is. It's so stupid, but it's like it's just like dumb and funny. I don't know. Isn't that how every dumb meme starts? Yeah, man. You know, you got Pepe the Frog, who's dumb and funny, and now look at him. He's like the leader of a racial issue. <laughs> but that's for another podcast. He's really, <laughs> really gone somewhere, you know? You know, one thing this, something of himself. this week that I really want to talk about, and I want to start out with, because I know for sure that it's a, a really hot topic that a lot of my viewers specifically care about, and that is American West Coast Hip Hop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's a big topic on my channel that I know a lot of people are really interested in, so I was thinking we could talk about the new Kendrick Lamar album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For like 50 of the 60 minutes of the podcast. Yeah, let's talk about it. Well, Brad, I know that you're totally into it. I listened to it for the first time. I actually do want to talk about it, but only for a couple minutes. I listened to yeah, it today yeah. for the first time, and I have some thoughts. But, but, Brett, I know that you you yeah, seem you were really excited about it. If you want to, you only want to listen talk. to it for the first time today. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, Is that I've, bad? I've, no, I've, I've just probably listened to it at least like 20 times through just to figure out my opinion on it. Oh dear. And I think it's great. <laughs> oh dear. Also, I mean, I'm delivering food, so I get to like. Listen oh, to okay, it yeah, time. that makes more sense. I'm like, yeah. why are you? Why? <laughs> I'm just sitting there staring at a wall, and it's on repeat. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I think it's really like amazing for a hip-hop album but for kendrick lamar i don't think it's like groundbreaking sort of in the way that good kid mad city and to pimp a butterfly were because mm-hmm. i i still listen to to pimp a butterfly and it kind of like floors me but i think this album's like really fun to listen to and it's got a lot of really good songs but i don't think it's at the level of his previous works which i think is fine i think i enjoy it more than good kid mad city I know that's your favorite one. That is my favorite. <laughs> but, that is that is admittedly my favorite one. But yeah, so yeah, Kendrick Lamar released his new album, Damn. Uh, it was hotly anticipated for the week that he announced it during, you know. But I don't know. What do you What did you think of it? You, you only had one listen, so it's, yeah. What are your um, first impressions? I like I, I like it more than To Pimp a Butterfly. I still like Mad City. It's probably my favorite one. Um, to Pimp a Butterfly was just different. It had a really different tone. But one thing that that I really like about his albums in general is he has a different producer for every single song, for every single track. It's it's a different producer, so you get like really really different sounding tracks. They're very very unique from each other, and eat, but yet somehow it's like a cohesive, it's like a cohesive album. So overall, I really really like it. Um, again, if I could rank them, I would say Mad City. 
Dam, and then Pimpa Butterfly. But I did not not like Pimpa Butterfly. I think another thing, too, is there felt, again, only one listen through when I was at work, so I wasn't, like, really intently listening, but I felt like there were a couple tracks that were a little too mumble rappy for me, and I wasn't mm -hmm. too into that. Yeah. I know that's the big trend now, but I didn't think that that would be on a Kendrick Lamar album. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he is trying to convey a different tone on this album for sure. Yeah. Like he definitely seems more depressed and more anxious about the way that the world's going and stuff. And that's kind of what's cool about it. Like, I don't know. This is like, a, I, I feel like every album is like a Kendrick Lamar you've never seen before. Yeah. That's kind of why I would recommend, like recommend if you're slightly interested in rap to give any of his albums a listen, maybe not section 80, just cause that one's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't love it. It's early work for him. Yep. It's pretty like typical. But like from Good Kid, Mad City is like a great story album. Like it's just like kind of a story of a kid, presumably him, like growing up in the gang life. And so Pippa Butterfly is like a really good social commentary on all the racism in America. And this is like, you know, we're living in a post Donald Trump world and how he's feeling about that. And I don't know. He, he's just a great artist in general. Yep. I think I think he's very approachable for people who aren't into rap. So I don't know. To sort of like circle it back and for your listeners purpose. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I was joking, obviously. <laughs> like, I don't expect, I, I, I bet a lot of my viewers have no idea who Kendrick Lamar is. But if you're interested in hip hop, especially if you want to keep up with the times, current hip hop, uh, definitely check out his new album. Sponsor the podcast this week. Kendrick Lamar himself sent me an email. He said, hey, I want to sponsor the Damage for Second podcast. <laughs> Uh, just give me a shout out, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, ain't no thing. You just shout me out on your podcast. Cause I know it's going to give me a lot of viewers, listeners, um, to my new album. And a lot of people might not know about it, but I know a lot of people listen to the damage for second podcast. So, so this is sort of us throwing him a bone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look, man, we know you can use the help and, uh, no problem. Like, mm -hmm. um, knew each other coming up and, uh, you know, it's, it's no problem just sort of help out help one, out someone one small anecdote about this album which i found really interesting to follow for like two days because that's the only length that it needed to last was everybody was prophes well, um hypothesizing that he was going to release another album on sunday i was going to ask you about that yeah one of the main one of the main reasons being that good friday is when jesus died or i think is that, that's when jesus died right well in in the biblical yes. scripture or whatever yes. that's mm -hmm. when he died and then on sunday he's resurrected and so everybody thought the dam was him dying because kendrick dies on the album supposedly and then people thought that there was going to be another album with him being resurrected and like there was all of these crazy ass theories about like the lyrics and all these different parallels and like oh my god it was like a lot of fun to look into and then he released nothing so <laughs> <laughs> so sunday passed and it's like all right well nothing happened so <clears throat> nah, he's just that's dead cool. but it, it was a lot of fun to to watch that i don't know but now that we have this album to sit on i think people are kind of calming down and finally figuring out how they feel about it so yeah that's good because it was pretty much all people were talking about was like oh when's the next album it's coming out like I, like imagine that like releasing this album that you probably worked for like at least one full year on <laughs> and like all people can talk about is When's the next one? When's the is next it? album? Yeah. Oh my god, when is it going? Oh god. Nobody's even talking about the album. It's like a little insulting, but yeah, it's been fun. Cool. So. All right, so games or or any other media type things. What have we been doing this week? Brett, why don't you start this week? Okay. Um, well, I, I poked at Persona a little bit more. I'm, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll just say. I'll try to come up with like something new to say about Persona that I've noticed over the course of the week because I'll surely be playing it for many more weeks and I've really made like no progress but I just wanted to say that the dungeon crawling aspect like the actual combat and stuff is so much more fun in this game than it was in Persona 4 like I actually look forward to it back in Persona 4 I wanted to just play like on very easy and just skip all the combat and like get to all the story stuff but in this game it's actually like really fun they do a lot of cool things to like vary it and all the dungeons are not just multiple random generated levels of like towers like that's how it used to be is like you just go through like floor by floor by floor by floor the designs never different or anything now in this game they've like fully designed each 
dungeon to be like it's a linear experience but you know there's different mechanics going on like in this one i have to like dodge lasers and stuff and, and there's, it's just really a lot more fun in the combat they give you a gun now and so each character has a different type of gun and, like you can use the ammo to just like shoot them a bunch of times i don't know it's kind of hard to explain without being in the context of the game yeah, every time you talk about it, I guess I, I, it's hard for me to visualize what it's about because, you know, you talk about it's kind of like a like a social life simulator. Not really a simulator, but, like, it's about, like, socializing, but then you're talking about going through dungeons and and combat I mean, really... and stuff. I don't, I don't fully follow it sometimes. It's well, just strange. Jay Brano, it's pretty simple. Um, so you have to go into the dungeon to defeat the person's inner feelings to change their their heart in the real world so that they become good people i mean it's it's really simple oh of course of course <laughs> how could i be no, so, so stupid <laughs> yeah i guess i i could do a better job of actually explaining it so basically there's these bad people in the world in the real life world of persona 5 i where gotcha. they're like criminals or they're doing bad things the theme seems to be like abuse against kids right now so it's pretty heavy and um and so these dungeons exist as this person's like inner thoughts manifested into an evil place where you're killing monsters and stuff mm -hmm. and so in order to change this person's heart and make them confess their sins or whatever you want to call it and and like turn into a good person you have to get to the end of the dungeon and steal their treasure which is what makes them evil and so <laughs> And so your whole team becomes cat burglars, and that's why you have guns, is because that's what a burglar has, is a gun. And so you work your way through the dungeon, and you destroy the monsters. <laughs> I'm still kill. confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I mean, that's, I'm still confused about it, too, to be honest with you. Know, I'm still <laughs> so, um, and I'm not trying to be, like, so, derogatory. I just, uh, it's just, like, oh, no. it's really hard to understand, I think, unless you really experience it, I suppose. It's, well, maybe this will help. It's uh, Japanese. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. I forgot. <laughs> it is so deeply anime. Okay. I don't know. It's it's the type of game that has a 15-hour tutorial, so, you know. Okay. <laughs> so. It sounds a little like, um, it reminds me of, the concept reminds me of Psychonauts, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. I, mean, it's I, not guess, a Japanese I guess you're kind of right. I haven't played Psychonauts, though. But they do do that, where you like go into people's minds, right, and like investigate their dreams, or I don't even remember exactly. Yeah, pretty much. There's works. a bunch of people with like certain mental problems, and you basically go into their brain and kind of figure out what the root cause is. And it's usually some past trauma, mm -hmm. which is <laughs> usually not the case for mentally ill people, but some <laughs> a decent <laughs> amount of the time. Um, <clears throat> and you kind of go and try to bring them closure uh, through like I think you usually like meet them in their own mind and then you kind of help them work it out yeah yeah so I mean it's a, it's a similar idea and like like basically these dungeons like ex they're called palaces in this game actually and these palaces ex exist as like a parallel universe to where these people actually live and so that's like and so for instance, this one I'm currently on, for some reason, monsters were hostile towards me immediately rather than, like, I started attacking them. And so I guess the reasoning behind that is because the guy who I'm trying to make their heart change, I guess his, like, sort of outlook is that he doesn't trust anybody. And so that's why everybody's, like, automatically attacking me. So, like, there's, it's pretty cool because there's, like, tangible reasons for every ridiculous thing happening, but they're ridiculous reasons so like you know it's it's all super anime in that <clears throat> in that sense but um, it sort of makes sense yeah uh, it's it's nonsensical but in a sensical way well i appreciate you taking the time again it's like i'm not trying to make fun of it because i just don't fully oh, yeah. under i just it's it's just strange but it sounds well, yeah, interesting it's, it's another thing you, you just have to play it to experience it and sort of understand yeah it sounds like it because i mean people are crazy about these games too it's it's pretty amazing how widely popular the Persona games have become. I think it's mostly because of the Persona Golden or on the uh, Vita. That sort of reeled in a lot of people because a lot of people bought the Vita and there was one game to play on it, Persona 4, and that's it. <laughs> so, 
So you got yeah, all these people me. who played it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's a pretty special series. Justin's like reading Rainbow. You gotta, reading Rainbow, you, yeah. You got if you want to learn more, you have to pick it up from your local library <laughs> and <laughs> learn more yourself. <laughs> yep. Thanks for that breakdown. <laughs> But other than that, um, I I just bought an iPad yesterday. Ooh. Because, yeah, I was looking for a um, an alternative to my laptop because my laptop shit the bed a long time ago, and I haven't really had anything to like do simple word processing on. I don't really like to do it on my desktop. So yeah, I just I decided to get one of these new iPads. It's not like the Pro model. It's one of the ones they just announced. I didn't even realize that they had just come out, but it was like the new model. It was pretty affordable, and I'm really enjoying it a lot. And I'm excited to get into some of the different games that they have for it. It sounds like there's a really, really good selection of games, especially Hearthstone. I'm excited to kind of get back into that game for a short amount of time, just because I feel like it's the perfect game to sort of like sit in front of the TV and just you know, yeah. play a game or two. Like, yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. I was thought FTL would be fun on an iPad if you weren't totally oh, yeah. burnt out on the game. Yeah, I never. Uh, I was looking that for that on the iPhone when I first got it. I kind of forgot that game existed, to be honest. Maybe I'll check that out. But they yeah, added more know. content to it at some point, didn't they? Like, I think they, out of nowhere, just added a bunch of free content to it, and I never, never played it. I don't know. I don't. Know. I really don't even know. I don't. I didn't get nearly as deep into that game as you did because I was pretty bad at it. I think I got one victory, and that was it. <laughs> But, well, yeah. my, my issue with it, uh, not to talk about it too much, but just that was that it was like, like work, some roguelikes, there was like one, maybe two ways to like do well. Mm. And so yeah. if you wanted to, and you could buy most of the things from the shop. So mm -hmm. you usually chose every single time how you wanted to play through it and you choose your starting ship. So like if you wanted to try anything differently, you sort of had to deliberately shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. <laughs> by picking something not as good as the, you know, really good thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, one thing that's really blown me away with this thing so far, this is my first ever, like, tablet. So the thing that's blown me away is reading comics on it. it looks unfreaking believable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is so sweet. The, the screen is so vivid. And, uh, and I, I was able to try a free trial of um, Comixology, like Plus, I think. They have some like Plus version where you can read like the first few issues of most series mm -hmm. for free. So I'm really excited to get into that. I wanted to get back into comics for a while, but like buying comics is expensive. And I know it's sort of like one of those mediums where like buying them, it really benefits the people that make them. But I don't know. It's, it's hard to justify in an age where you can watch like any television show for basically ten dollars a month so. yeah yeah so. or less <laughs> or, or or less maybe even free who knows <laughs> <But>. who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm excited to get more into this thing i, I like like i'm still in like the early phases of having a new toy where everything to do on it is like fun it'll be cool to see it becoming a part of like my everyday usage and seeing how that pans yeah. out because i was kind of worried i've wanted one for so long that i just could never really justify it but now that i've kind of come up with like a justification i'm excited to see if it's really worth it or mm -hmm. if i'm just gonna end up letting it collect us so, let us know keep us updated i'll yeah. keep you updated the weekly ipad update brought to you by big demon <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's all I've been up to. I've just been drinking some beers lately, and yeah, cool. It's been good. What about you, Keith? Well, uh, I um, in the in in non gaming whatever. Um, I think you and I both just listened straight through uh, S Town, which is like a and new NPR podcast and they just sort of put it all out so you like binge listen to it over the course of a day and oh, all yeah. like that I thought that was really good it's, uh, without spoiling anything it's depressing um, but it should be obvious if you know anything about it so yeah. um, don't look up anything about it at all uh, yes listen to it. 
Agreed. Do not spoil yourself if you plan on listening to it. Can it's I just find this on like, like iTunes or something? Or? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's basic. It's something oh, yeah, it's like serial, right you know, where you just you're not gonna want. To. It sort of it unfolds over the course of it, so don't look up literally anything. Literally anything. Okay. I know nothing. I just subscribed to it, so it's official. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Sweet. I, cool. I listened to the whole thing in like a day. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. uh. How long is it? It's seven episodes, and each one's uh, most are about an hour, some are a little hour. under. But it's oh, wow, yeah. That's... Okay. It was just so like a day at work. I just blasted, yeah, exactly. blasted through it. I wasn't like super focused on it. I just. But it was um. It's it's weird. It shifts focus a lot. I I I was. A little critical of that. I felt like it, it changes focus a little too much. It's a little sure. scatterbrained. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think scatterbrained would be a good term for it. And you see that a lot with like, NPR podcasts because they don't, they start with something and they get a decent number of material, uh, amount of material, and they don't know yet how, if, they, if, it's, if they're like investigating something, they don't know what the story is going to be. Yeah. And what, you know, so... Yeah, you kind of saw the same thing with cereal. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's true. I, I do, I do like the idea. Like, while it's not something that you can really know what to expect. Again, don't spoil it because the whole point is like it changes focus pretty, uh, pretty heavily, but in a really interesting way. But also, um, like cereal, you sort of experience the story unfolding, and it's not really. It's true, and it's again, like Keith said, it's quite depressing. You experience it as it's unfolding. Yeah, because what they're you know like as they're as they're uh, yeah, the journalizing, <laughs> professional journalizers, um, yeah, yeah. As, they're, as they're reporting, you you under like you kind of live through it with them, which is really interesting. Mhm. Mm so I think that's definitely worth worth listening to and serial if you don't know anything about it, which is unlikely. Yeah, um, that's probably been spoiled for you. Season one, season two, I just I can't really get into it, but. Uh, yeah, anyway, in, in gaming, not really news, but I, uh, so I've been playing more Mass Effect and Andromeda, and um, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I mean, they're definitely, like I said, fetch quests and stuff, but uh, I think the vehicle's a lot better. I've experienced, like, a couple bugs here and there. Nothing too awful. The worst one that I got so far was, like, I was somehow entering my... It's not the Mako, but the Nomad, the, the yesterday. I was entering this, um, you know, the buggy that you drive around. Yeah. And, like, right as a cutscene was happening or something. So, like, the camera got all fucked up with the Nomad. And it wouldn't go away until I left the planet entirely and came back. Oh, that's fun. So, yeah, it was, every time I entered it, it would go into, a, like, a weird first-person mode. And it was impossible to drive the... It was like you could look around normally, like you were stand, like you were in first person, but you were also driving the thing, and it was totally impossible. I couldn't find anything about it online, so literally just had to leave the planet and come back. At least then it was fixed, um, and nothing other, no, nothing else major in terms of bugs. Um, I like the. I've been having a lot of fun with the skills and just sort of like respecking. Which uh, it was just pretty cheap, and I think it sort of decided because they let you sort of do, you know, change profiles and everything. I think I'm just gonna kind of do everything I want to do in the first run and not play through again. And I think it's probably a game that you would do that in. Number one, because there's lots of fetch quests and stuff that you probably don't really want to do again. I mean, but I guess people play through Skyrim a million times. But number two, like you respec and you know you can kind of set up your character in different ways and um, so I've been doing this like charge you know biotic detonation build um, which is kind of interesting but I've also been doing like sniper rifles which sounds totally at odds and it probably is but which is kind of I enjoy both of them so uh, I haven't really min maxed I've just been doing that and so if I was gonna like change it up, I honestly don't know what I would do. Like I don't, I don't know. There's, I can't really think of any builds that I would really want to do instead of that because I feel like you get a lot. I mean, if you wanted to min-max weapons, you'd go like assault or whatever. But uh, I, f I just feel like you have the fun of assault when you're doing 
like biotic mm -hmm. and you're not severely gimped like i'm still one shotting most things with the black widow so i don't know and the weapons are kind of cool but kind of overwhelming like it's just difficult to tell what's good and you don't really have the resources to experiment that much so you sort of look up online what's okay what's the best assault rifle and then you make it um, mass effect was like that too bit. I just, who who gets like psyched about crafting? I don't. <laughs> yeah, it gives you, it gives you more options, but you're just like, okay, well, I guess I have to look this up and do a bunch of annoying like collecting and stuff. And I, I don't know. I guess I'd just rather like go find this somewhere. And it, that ends up being sort of what happens. You get this one perk, and you start finding these loot boxes all over the place. And I was like this close to crafting my Black Widow three. That's the other thing is that you have to recraft it every time you get a new level and you so and then you won't have the materials. So you're like, okay, I could craft the Black Widow one right now, but I've almost got enough to craft the Black Widow two. Uh, so I guess I should just wait because then I'll have to craft it again and I won't have the materials. But they're kind of close in level anyway. But I was gonna craft the Black Widow three and then I opened a box and just found one. I was about to you know, craft a like a melee weapon and then I killed something and just found, you know, something as good as I could craft. Um, so I don't know. There's a uh there's there's that. It's like the crafting I think is um kind of ignorable. Jen just ignored it entirely. Um but I, I guess you could spend a lot of time there. And there's like missions side missions like the mobile game kind of shit where you just send your guys on. And in fact, you can get a mobile app and just do it through there instead of through the game. <laughs> um, and you get like rewards for it, but it's just, you know, and, I, and I'm doing it, but it's just boring. You know, like those those dumb, like you send people on missions and then they'll bring back resources and they'll, oh, well, I'll be back in three hours, okay? And then they bring back resources and you get enough resources and you're like, oh, I can get another strike team. So now I can send out four teams. And then they'll bring back some resources, but I don't know. Like, so I'm experimenting with all of it, but like, I, I think you could like look. So my suggestion is this, ignore the missions, look online because you don't need to be checking your phone, you know, once every hour for these dumb missions, check, um, online and see what weapons are most fun or best and just craft those and ignore the rest of it and pick like one set of armor and craft that and ignore errands in the game unless you really are starved for more content and just do like the main and the side missions okay this is good because uh, i'm gonna play it soon it's it's just the situation with these open world games i'll shut up about it in a second where i mean they just pad the content like extremely and it was refreshing in horizon when they didn't feel the need to do that I, if you're a little kid and you you know don't have that many games then that's good because then you can just spend more time on it but it's you know i spent fucking forever like okay drive around and tag all of these loose satellite parts that broke apart and there were six of them and they're scattered all over eos which is one of the planets you go to and i did it and i like expected something to happen and then they were just like oh you finished it 100 experience points like <laughs> and it took forever yuck um, but <laughs> side, side missions are cool and the planet's cool, and I think that it's actually kind of fun to drive around the uh, um, Nomad. Combat's really, really fun. Um, I actually like uh, Male Rider, Rider quite a bit. I think he's pretty cool. Um, and then on top of that, the only other thing we've been doing is uh, Little Big Planet 3 was available for free with PS Plus a while back. And so we were in Cleveland this weekend, and Jen and I just uh, spent a lot of time playing that. And it's, you know, it's Little Big Planet. It's fun if, I mean, she's never played it and I haven't played it in a while, so it, it'll be fun for a while until I get bored of it because it's just your basic platformer. Sure. But um, they've added some creative physics-based puzzles to it. And uh, I think the two-player ones are the most fun, so, and I'm seeing like a decent amount of that. So I'd say uh, that game's worth playing if you can get it cheap, which you can, and if you uh, have another person to sit on the couch and play with you. Okay. It's only PS, right? Probably. Little Big Planet's <laughs> media molecule is traditionally uh, uh, Sony exclusively, I think. <clears throat> well, yeah. then I won't be playing it. Just forget so it, Keith! Dust and... Why did you even tell me about it? Ugh! Oh, man! <laughs>
Oh man. Sorry, Dostoyan. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> so, what have I been doing this week? I'm not sure. Keith, you got any, you got anything else? Nope. Okay. Go get a tag. <laughs> Glad you asked yourself this week. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know. Uh, to be honest, it's it's been a it's been a slow it's been a slow it's been a slow one. I've been playing a lot of these Rock the Cabinet entries, which I've been doing for like the last two weeks. But is, what? So oh, it's. That, um... This Starcraft? is yeah, it's for StarCraft and it's the it's the fancy co-op arcade submissions thing. And it's really there's really fun to play a bunch of these, but again, it's like all I've been doing for the past 2 weeks. And after I play that plus recording stuff, I'm just I just like don't want to do anything else. Yeah. But uh we played a lot of <laughs> we played a lot of interesting submissions. Um I think I found one that is probably my favorite by like a wide margin, but I don't want to say I don't want to like say it, even though most people know it is just because Joe and I are the only two people who are giving it any sort of exposure at all, and so I don't want to be like, oh, I clearly like this one, so you, you should just vote this one because it's a community vote. So I don't I don't just want to tell people like, oh, you should just just pick just pick this one because I know I'm going to, and I feel like it's almost like a clear winner, but I don't know. It's weird. I've never had this kind of power before. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of influence over the uh, co-op community. Now yep. back to it. All that StarCraft community. StarCraft community. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. You better be careful with all that power. Don't let it go to your head now. No one man can have all that power, you know? <laughs> or should have, exactly. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, some interesting gaming news. So I'm just going to kind of skip over myself because my life is incredibly straightforward this week. Um, <laughs> is I think the a lot of stuff at Star Wars Celebration is interesting and also well I think the Battlefront 2 stuff because so many people are jaded and I think a lot of people don't want to admit that they watched it and they read a lot of the features and they thought okay I'm down with this because I am and also I kind of defended the first one but that was also because I didn't really have an issue with the money because I'm you know, I have money. People who didn't have money who spent money on the first game probably were upset with it. Um, but I didn't. I, you know, I was a, I was just a believer of like, well, I got my money's worth just because I spent, you know, I spent like 20 to 25 hours on this game. That's good enough for me. Um, and again, that was just my perspective on it. Whereas I think a lot of people were just unhappy because it didn't have Clone Wars, it didn't have space battles, it didn't have uh, split string co-op, it didn't have a campaign. And the announcement of this new one has all of those things. Mm. Which, again, it's just sort of like everyone's jaded and they're cor they've corrected, they've seemingly corrected their mistakes. So, should we like it this time? Should we spend the money? You know, vote with your wallet. I mean, but I almost blame those people for mindlessly buying it the first time as opposed to buying it twice. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's less of a crime, it's less hypocritical to buy it twice rather than the mistake of maybe they just shouldn't have bought the first one in the first place before doing their research. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I didn't, so, so I never bought it. The thing about the first one is it looked absolutely gorgeous, right? Yes. And then it's Star Wars and you're like, well, I like Battlefield, so I mean, like, yeah. Um, but I remember, like, we just played it at a friend's house, and it just seemed so, I don't know. I mean, I know that you guys got some enjoyment out of it, but it seemed like, and I felt this way about other Battlefield games, um, but it just was like, okay, run, 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 uh, where do I go? Um, oh, I got sniped. <laughs> like, yeah, it's definitely so, shallow in that way, without a doubt. There's... There's that kind of thing. So, like, just in terms of, like, if, if I'm on, playing, like, an online competitive shooter or something, I just feel like I have more fun, you know, playing a, an Overwatch or even a Call of Duty or something like that. And I know that probably a lot of people would uh, disagree because, obviously, the Battlefield games are really popular. And I'm sure if I just put in the, the time, in the time, like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I know where all the objectives are. So, like, I'm enjoying it more, even though I still have to, like do some running and but yeah i don't know in the old battlefield games you know or battlefront i, I actually like didn't like those as much as other people either and it was i think it just sort of felt a little shallow um 
but I think that the campaign is what's really exciting to me and the co-op, right? Yes. Can you do like co- can you do like co-op through the campaign because that alone I I might buy it. I don't know and about I the campaign. I haven't read about that yet. Was there a campaign in the first one? No. Nope. I didn't think there so. There were some there okay. were some scenarios that you could play co-op. Um, but nothing like a like an actual campaign. So I'm pretty excited about that as well. I think that'll be really neat. Is it split screen co-op? So there's split screen for PS4 and Xbox. But again, I don't know if there's co-op for the campaign. I don't think that was mentioned. No. Yeah. Hmm. But the campaign is intriguing to me because and I this was a I saw this on newsbrute.com. I'll have you know. Um, Ooh, uh. The the. Uh, the writer, the main, the lead writer was the lead writer for Spec Ops: The Line, and they got him to yeah. to write for for Battlefront. So, what is that going to be about? Is it just going to be like that? Just to me, just is really intriguing. Like, what is that going to turn out to be? Is it going to be like really dark? Because what it looks like is you're an Imperial officer, and you witness the second Death Star get destroyed, and then you you like re you like meet up with the remnants of the Imperials. And then, but in the description, it was like, oh, a tale of redemption or something like that. And and I just sort of groaned. I'm like, is this going to be like another thing where, oh, well, you know, I guess it's just going to be a, you know, they're just going to join the rebels at the end. Like, I almost just want it to be, I want it to be Imperials who just double down on how crazy they are. You know what I mean? Like, that's how the First Order started. I think that would be really neat where it just like, you, it's, well, they just get like crazier. darkness. And then you use uh, white phosphorus on the rebels, <laughs> and then you start to question your decisions. Oh my god, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> but I mean, I think there's a chance for it to be interesting and dark for a couple different reasons. Uh, just um, you know, that guy's got an interesting reputation at this point. I know Keith, you're you're kind of like get kind of agitated about that game because you know once the hype is over with it, it's just kind of like okay, we get it, people like it. Give it a break, <laughs> which I totally agree with. You know, like once once you experience it once, you don't need to like, you don't have to keep talking about it. I guess. But I don't know. What are your what are your guys' hopes? I think, or what are your thoughts on it, especially with um, people who are very jaded with the first game? You played the uh, first one, didn't you, Brett? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I I really thought it was a, like an amazing concept. Like I really. My first, like, two hours in that game were just filled with me feeling really, really awesome about being in this universe, like, playing in it and stuff. And then when you get deeper, it is just, like, such a hollow experience. Yeah. There's just, like, nothing to it. Exactly. Like, the thing about Battlefield that makes it so special is that, there, you know, you have multiple different classes. And, like, pretty much at any point in the game, you can contribute somehow to your team winning. Like, you don't have to always be going and mowing down people you can jump on a turret and try to take out the guys in the air you can you know just run around and heal your people or whatever and, and in battlefront there was none of that like there was just no real like uh, like the objectives just felt like you were just killing people and then just going and, and that's it and you kill people and that's it and, yeah like, well the objectives were all and get into a thing and it's like i don't know yeah the objectives were all team-based but yeah but the game was designed in a way such there was no teamwork yeah. So it just made no sense. Like everything, there there were no classes. They're trying. They they're adding classes with this new entry. Basically, everything they described is everything everyone wanted with the first Battlefront. It's almost like the first Battlefront was Battlefront point five, and this is Battlefront one And like clearly, they ran out of time because there was hype. There was hype with Force Awakens, and they needed to get it out before that movie. And it feels like this is the game that should have been released, and now you know now it's here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, is they probably just needed to rush something out for Force Awakens. Because, I mean, I bought the game because of Force Awakens. I wasn't really going to get it. But then I was like, holy shit, I need to play. I need more Star Wars in my life. <laughs> so I got it. And so, um, you know, I, <clears throat> it's DICE that makes it, right? DICE. Yeah, DICE. Same people as Battlefield. They can make a good-ass game. Like, they're a really capable company, and they've made some really amazing shooters in the past. And I don't doubt that Battlefront 2 will be really, really good. Because what they have on the surface is like really amazing. I mean, the, the Star Wars experience is there, like jumping in a, oh, I shouldn't say jumping in an X-Wing because all the flight stuff was kind of mediocre, but like being a stormtrooper and 
having those blasters and like just the sound design of it all and like you know you really killing feel like you're younglings. in like a film scene and killing young <laughs> killing yeah. younglings my favorite part of the game <laughs> so i don't know i i have high hopes i think it'll i think it'll be good and you know dice has proved himself in the past they're a good company like yeah. i said so so we'll see. I, I guess I think, I think right. a lot of people are just hesitant to say, yes, I'm excited for this, only because they're like, well, if I say I'm going to get this one, am I a hypocrite? Are people going to, is like the, is the online hive mind going to turn against this one? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like you got to think critically about that. And if, if it seems sketchy before you buy it, then don't buy it. You know, it's just... Yeah. Ugh, I don't know, was, but I'm looking forward Battle to it. Front, was Battlefront 1, well, like, you know, the, the one that recently came out, is that really a game that people were super burned on? I didn't, I feel like I don't remember that um, being a, a huge travesty of a game, sort of like. I um, think so. I don't even know an example. But... I don't know, Keith, do you do you remember? Well, it wasn't it wasn't a travesty, but I think people were disappointed. The hype died, like, like that. Quickly, yeah. Like, people were extremely excited about it, and then I think it's just basically what you said. Um, uh, is you know that it's kind of a shallow experience. That's how I felt about the original Battlefront games, by the way. Like that was pretty much exactly what the original Battlefront games were. <laughs> like they were, it was better. I think people glorify. I mean, obviously that was a long time ago, but people like look back on Battlefront with rose-colored glasses. But those games, I'm gonna be honest. Like it just wasn't. Like those games were not very good they weren't as good as people remember them i think they weren't as good as people remember they were extremely shallow like the combat was not particularly good and that was all there was like that that was all there was i mean was running around on on a battlefield but it was like i, I don't know i guess like online it'd be you know uh, <laughs> Competitive online can make a fairly shallow experience more fun. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think people look back on that with throws colored glasses because I think they delivered exactly like, oh, a, a Battlefront with modern gen? Like, that's what that was. I mean, it didn't have, like... But I think people expected and hoped for more from from DICE because of what they had done with Battlefield, um, which I think is, like, you know, I, I, I meant... I, mentioned that I don't necessarily have fun with it, but I think it's objectively a good game. They are, the Battlefield series in general. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's almost no question in my mind that that was what happened, was they probably had all this other stuff planned, because it, it, if you make Battlefront, it, I mean, it's just, it should be a slam dunk battle, uh, you know, or sorry, if you make Battlefield, doing Battlefront with um, basically just the same graphics and technology and system and mechanics as uh, Battlefield, that's pretty much what everybody expected, I think. Um, so the fact that it did not have any of those things, it was literally a copy of Battlefield except with less mechanics in it, you know, I think that it was definitely because they wanted to get it out before uh, Force Awakens. Now the question is, I think the thing to really be worried about is are they going to do the same thing here? Like when is the release date? Has they, have they said that yet? Uh, I don't recall if they did. Because if they're trying to sync it up with this next movie release again, because clearly they just put out all this information around the same time as the trailer for the next movie, I, I just think that that's a totally legitimate fear, uh, is that, oh, are they going to do exactly the same thing? Now, in terms of the mechanics that they've listed, it sounds like it's been really fleshed out. But I remember even when the game came out, people were saying, like, well, where's this and where's this and where's this and where's the... Like, where's the uh, prequel stuff or whatever? I don't remember what Battlefield, Battlefront had. Um, but you're saying, where's the prequel stuff? Oh, it's just going to be in the next one. And they're just already planning for the next game. And they deliberately left it out. And, I mean, I think that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know. I think, basically, with all the humming and hawing that I've been saying about, like, the hypocrisy and stuff, is I'm pretty confident I will get it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I will wait, though. I will not pre-order it. That's that's the difference, though. I do not plan on pre-ordering it. I will. Yeah. You don't need to give it some just, thought. You don't yeah. Need to. And um, I think that's definitely yeah. Wait. If the game seems good a week after launch, then then get it if you can afford it. Um, because I I don't know. I'm pretty optimistic about it, but 
you know, what's the next thing going to be? Are they going to be game breaking bugs? Are they going to be, I don't know, three maps and they never put out anything else? Well, the, and the thing is, the the content for the DLC of the original Battlefront is actually really, really good, but most people stopped playing it before it was released. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, like, yeah. it made it a complete game, but that's the problem. They released an incomplete game. It really was. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was, mostly because I felt like I didn't have much to lose with what I paid for it. Um, but again, I totally get why people felt jaded by it. Interesting. Um... What, well, the other big news, um, so Nintendo discontinued their, their classic mini console. Um, we've beaten Nintendo to death. Oh, the, like, the NES classic thing? Yeah, we've beaten Nintendo to death, but seriously, let's, because oh, there's some controversy on this, <laughs> what are your, what do you guys think? Um, what are your initial thoughts on them discontinuing this? You think it's stupid? You think it makes sense? You think they have a good reason know. for it, or just... I mean, there has to be a reason for it. What do you think it is? I'm um, trying to figure it out. <laughs> you go ahead, Brett. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to say. Like, who manufactures these? Really? Like, maybe it was just costing them too much, and they were looking at it, and maybe they want to put that cost into producing more switches, which is future-proofing them rather than just, you know, getting goofy Christmas presents that people play like for an hour. Like, I don't know. I never wanted one of those things. I never really saw the appeal, so... I don't, man, I'm probably not the right person to say it, but I just, like, didn't really care. And I know that they were selling a lot, but it was only 60 bucks for, like, something that was emulating a lot of their games, which they probably didn't love either. Which they can make so, money off of the virtual console for. Exactly. Know? Yeah, that too. So, I mean, you know... I guess they have their reasons. It's pretty silly because they were sell selling so well, but maybe they were selling them at a loss or... Well, it's hard to... That was my suspicion as well, though. Were, but... Yeah, no, I thought the same thing. Yeah. I thought it had to do with, you know, they're notoriously anti-pirate, and they were basically emulating their own games, which is just... It's something yeah. that I think that Nintendo has always hated. And it's just what they basically were selling us an emulator of, of their stuff, yeah. interestingly enough. Maybe, like, dollar-wise, they weren't actually selling them at a loss, but, like, selling their software at such a low price, maybe that was what they were considering a loss? Like, you know, I, I, I'm sh I don't know. How many games were on it? Like, 30? Yeah. And so, I mean, I think the NES games on the virtual console usually would go for $5, so that's, what, $150 that they could potentially make by just putting those all onto the market? Yeah on the current console that they're going to be producing a fuck ton of anyways, so... Mm -hmm. So my only retort oh. to that is I feel like it's a holiday item. The target audience for that machine is not people that own a Nintendo console already. Yeah. It's 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 like a souvenir item. It's, yeah. It's neat looking. It's a cool little thing. But that's why but, I just can't yeah. I just can't quite put my finger on like what I, I think it's I think you are more right though about it was cost cutting and you know they decided to like if their manufacturer said we can either make more of these or we can make more switches they probably went with more switches so I think you're, I think that's correct the virtual console thing just seems a little too shallow to be true do you think they're just like totally oblivious to the secondhand market with all this shit like like how ridiculous it is that these stupid emulators sell for however much they were for the Christmas season, and then all these amiibos, like the same thing, where they're not producing enough, and then they're just selling for ridiculous amounts. Yeah, I don't. It's like, I don't, don't you realize you're hurting your consumers by doing that? I don't think they're oblivious to it, but the question is, like, because with the amiibos, I just think it became pretty clear. I just think if you look at the examples of the amiibos and some of these other, like, previous consoles. I think it's like an artificial scarcity thing. Like, I don't, if they're making money on these things, which obviously they are, like, because you can say that about maybe the NES, like the, um, the mini NES, but I don't think you can say that about like the Switch and the Wii. Like, why didn't they make enough of these? Like, why are, you know, why are they selling out everywhere and no one can get one? Well, I mean, I, if they are making money on those, which they obviously are, because that's their whole business model, why would they fall for that over and over and over again? 
it doesn't make any sense. And yeah. I think that if you look at the pattern, it's like an artificial scarcity kind of thing where they want to drive up demand. I mean, they care a lot about their brand. And I think there's a lot of possibilities about like the, um, the NES, or what, what is it, the Nintendo Classic or the NES Classic? What is it? It's like the NES Classic Edition, right? Or something NES like Classic. I mean, if you look at that, I just think that there's a lot of possibilities. Certainly they couldn't have been making that much money off of it because they have to put in enough hardware to emulate a, you know, a Nintendo, which doesn't take much. It mm -hmm. doesn't take much. But then as far as they're concerned, how with how much their intellectual property is worth based on how much like you were saying they've been selling it for on the virtual uh, virtual console um it's i mean they they have to believe at least that they're selling at a loss so i think there's a chance they put it out to sort of remind everybody and say like hey everybody remember nintendo remember nintendo remember how much you love these games nostalgia nostalgia exactly. nostalgia. here's our new console now we were taking this NES Classic off the market. I think it's stranger because I think what you really have to think about, and it's what you were talking about, um, Justin, I think, where, like, that's very unusual for them. I mean, that seemed like a bizarre move for them to put this thing out at all, NES Classic. Why would they have done that? I think that's what you really have. It's not that much of a surprise that they took it off the market except for the fact that they put it on the market in the first place for some reason. Yeah. And... Um, so I think that you have to look at that to figure out why they did it. And the only thing I can think of is to try to drum up. And I mean, certainly they were making money on that thing. People loved it. Um, but they probably thought, oh, well, we deserve to be making more for the intellectual property for these old games. So maybe they're hoping to sell them on the Switch. And that, yeah, and now that they've got a new shiny console that not only is new but it's also selling really well like they have a good platform to justify taking those off of the market and then putting it onto this one so. yeah it's really weird though once again really <laughs> well poppy <laughs> trash brought up a good point where he, he said you know the emulator market is saturated and it's basically dead and the question is does nintendo realize that because it, it, there's a huge emulator market but for the audience that this thing was appealing to it's people that don't understand emulation and the fact that there are emulators that you can get for free or they would think it would be wrong yeah. um, they just don't want to be trouble yeah so again it's it's there is an oversaturated emulator market and nintendo hates it with a passion so they said you know what <laughs> fuck you we'll put out our own we're going to charge 60 dollars, <laughs> and it's going to fly off the shelves and it did and then they just stopped selling it it was almost like they were just trying to prove that point to show that they could <laughs> still do it it was like a trial run to show that their ip still has huge value even though you can easily get it for free <laughs> and I don't know. I just, I think so lowly of Nintendo. I admit, I really, so it's either they're bad businessmen at best or they're just really terrible, uh, not terrible. They're, they're really good manipulators at worst. So in either case, I don't like them. <laughs> I feel like they're advertising and marketing department. A lot of people are like, well, they're a big business. I'm going to trust what they're doing. And I used to say that too, but they've made so many blunders in the past like the fucking Power Glove that Chat was talking about, like Virtual Boy, like the Wii U, they've made mistakes in the past, and just be, they have lightning in a bottle with some of their IPs, but they really just aren't consistent at all. They take risks, but they have no consistency to back it up. And I think that those don't have to be mutually exclusive. And I'm like, I'm like mad talking about it because I think it was a, a silly decision, especially because they have no transparency with these fans that they're beloved. People love them, and they they just, if you're going to take that off the market, it's going to anger people, and they could have released some sort of statement that was like, well, we can't produce this because Switch is really important to people, and we want to get those out faster, and we use this manufacturer. I don't know. They could they could disclose that information. They just refuse to do it. Yeah. yeah, I don't really blame them either. You know, I don't know. I don't think I can be upset about it. So yeah. I, I'm sounding I more upset about, about it than I am just because, like, I'm... I'm I was reading about today, like, I just I just read all over the place. People are like, I can't believe they stopped. They're not selling these. I was waiting for them to come back in stock. Like, I didn't pre-order them because I figured they would order more, and they didn't, which means Nintendo said, well, what we're doing is we're setting a precedent saying you better pre-order the next thing, which to me is just really skeezy. Yeah. I mean, to me, to me, it's it was always a product that seemed like something for... Uh, maybe not a collector, but, you know, somebody that wants something special for yeah. Nintendo and someone that wants to, like, sort of remember 
having that old console and I, and I feel like that type of thing isn't the type of thing that's always going to be around either like it's sort of I can't think of like a good word for it but just something that's not going to be around forever and, and I guess it's true like I mean and it's going to probably be worth something someday now so yeah uh, I guess I just I don't know it just seems so illogical from a a casual viewer's perspective which is why I just like I just it just doesn't make any sense and I have to know why only true Nintendo fans got to get one because I want to say there had to have been a good reason right but what is it I want to know what it is if it's some genius market manipulation I want to understand it it just bothers me a lot (laughs) maybe one day you'll figure it out maybe one day no, sometimes they do like postmortems on that type of thing. I don't know if Nintendo would ever do that, but <laughs> it would be definitely interesting because it, it was so successful. Like, it, it's definitely a strange. It's a strange move because it sold so well. But I, I think there's a lot of different factors that come into play with something like that, where you're you're selling your games as a bundle for a cheap price on a very cool piece of technology. Yep. So, I'm furious still. <laughs> Crazy Nintendo. You're not going to talk me down from this, Brett. I am so mad. All right, I have an anecdote idea. Let's hear it. Is it that time? Yeah, I'm I think. Sorry, it, I yeah, know. I think so. We're already over time, so let's let's hear it. All right, so it's ten o'clock at night, and you're hungry. What are you getting? Hmm. So it's ten o'clock at night. Your li- your options are certainly limited. Exactly. Um, there's not many places that would deliver. If you were on, like, a college campus or something, you, you could probably do something. Um, historically, it's been Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Taco Bell's the the winner. It's a good go-to. We don't have a Taco Bell close to us that's open. You should get a Krispy Kreme. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah, I'd go to Krispy Kreme. You know, for me, I think... So, a lot of places around here do deliver around that time. I would either get frozen yogurt, which I have some waiting for me in the freezer. I'm really excited about it. Or there's a place nearby that that has really good queso dip and buffalo wings. And I would order from there. It's like the perfect either drunk or late night food. Yeah. I agree. Like queso, that's, that's a great leg. You had a couple beers and uh, anything. Jeez, anything with queso. Nachos. Oh my god. Yep. There's a place actually, um, there's a bar that's like right near us that you can get like, uh, you can get some pretty good pizzas there. And you, I mean, it's pretty, it's open really, really, really late and it's cheap. You can get like a chicken bacon jalapeno or you can mm. get like a, a pepperoni, you know, your traditional one. And that's, that's honestly a pretty good go to. Late night pizza. Yeah, so my go-to is always Domino's because it's like the only place around here that would deliver that late. <laughs> usually, if it's usually if it's ten o'clock at night and I'm looking for food, I'm not in any state to be driving. So uh, I usually I always got to get a marble cookie brownie, which if you guys haven't tried it, <laughs> you got to. It's really good. Are you looking it up right now? No. Oh, I was hoping you would be. But I can. So it's it's just a cookie brownie. I mean, it's just brownie and cookie mixed together, and they cook it in like one of their breadstick pans or something. But it's it's fiendishly good. Fiendishly good. I like the sound of that. Yeah. So I don't know. Domino's is like so bad, but <laughs> it's the spot. So. I only said that I was I got that idea because I was. Thinking of um, getting some Domino's myself. I was also thinking. <laughs> I was also thinking of polling the audience. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was thinking of it would be a fun idea for us to one week come up with what we're getting for takeout. You know how like you're in a group and and you're all, everybody's trying to decide together what they're getting and like everybody's like oh, I don't really feel like that. I don't feel like that. Sure. I was thinking it'd be fun to like do that, but I don't know. Too much trouble. <laughs> sure. Plus, we're not actually together, so I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same effect. That was a good anecdote idea. That was a good well, one, Brett. 
appreciate you stepping up. Well, thanks, guys. You stepped in when I, when I, when I failed to. Stepped out. <laughs> As I the, never as the co-host with the co-most. The right? co-most, this yeah. Week, you're the you're the co you're the co-host of the co-most. Well, you always are, but this time you're the only co-host with the co-most. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, in that case, this is the Damage Per Second podcast. Signing out. Work on your co-hosting. Signing out. <laughs> Signing out.